Siege of Shanghai is probably the most known and iconic Battlefield 4 map. Back in the 2013, the game was advertised using this map, and it did pretty good job. Urban environment, high skyscrapers, the main evolution event, it all made positive impressions in players' minds. And even today, this map is liked and appreciated by many players. But let's look why exactly. With all the DLCs, Battlefield 4 has 33 maps. 8 of them are really wide open. If you don't have a tank, helicopter, airplane or just a jeep, chances are you will be killed by the other tank, helicopter, airplane or just a sniper. It's really hard to get to the concrete point on the foot. Silk Road and Hammerhead can also directly put you in disadvantage. Soldiers are usually wearing dark uniforms which are well visible on sand or snow. Technically, there is one camo that's a bit white but it doesn't hide you at all, especially if your enemy is in the tank and can clearly see you in thermal vision anyway. 14 of these maps we can classify as semi-wide open. They are spacious, just like last 8, but they have somewhere a place that is intended only for infantry. For example, tanks cannot enter the underground area in the middle of Caspian border. You need to exit your vehicle in order to kill your enemy if you want to capture the point entirely. Most infantry battle on Wavebreaker takes place also in the middle. Although you can enter this area with boat or helicopter, it's not that easy to stay alive right there because many players have rocket launchers. I also want to mention that some of the maps are splitting infantry and vehicles by its design. Let's take for example Operation Firestorm because it is most visible right here. These buildings are mostly occupied by infantry, in particular by snipers. Occasionally you can spot tank trying to capture a point but it probably will be destroyed very soon so let's ignore it. South side is really wide open. If you don't have a tank or car to quickly escape this area, you will be totally obliterated in a blink of an eye. In the other hand, however, if there is an enemy tank, it doesn't really have a place to hide, so it can be easily destroyed by airplanes or someone with javelin. In fact, a lot of players decide that it is better to arrive even more to the north. This place is also wide open, but these hills and buildings are working like a shield, so you can just hide when you need to repair your vehicle. Similar split intersections is also visible on Giants of Karelia or Altai range and some more. We also have these five guys. These maps are purposely designed for infantry only, regardless of the chosen game mode. Three of them has vehicles, but they are purposed to be transportation and supportive role rather than direct combat. In fact, they are even ignored by many players. There is absence of heavy vehicles, so it's easier to run around enemies and flank them. But these maps suffers from different thing. Exclusion of engineer class. This man is dedicated to vehicles to repair and or destroy them. So if map doesn't have any significant vehicles, playing him is a bit pointless. Although you can take rocket launcher and shoot enemies on 1v1 for a laugh, but I guess it's not fun for them. Let's talk about these two maps, Lankang Dam and Flood Zone. Both maps have a section that is reserved for infantry, of course, as long as there is no helicopters. There are also places that are intended to be for vehicles, but it is possible to run there on foot. The chances for a sniper to shoot you from 2 kilometers is also low because of a lot of buildings around. The Lankang Dam has also the boats, something that Siege of Shanghai doesn't feature, but we will come back to this later. So where are the problems, you might ask? You see, Lankang Dam is wide open on a late game. Players with tanks, helicopters and airplanes will absolutely demolish this map, meaning that infantry cannot hide very well. This map also features a Levolution event, but it's not so impressive as the Skyscraper in Shanghai. It has impact on the game, because on this area infantry players have easier time and vehicles cannot drive so easily as before the event. But this thing happens in... background. You can simply avoid this section of the map, do not even know that someone triggered this action. It doesn't have such a big impact in gameplay overall. The Flood Zone, on the other hand, has one of the best evolutions in the whole game. It's not just boring building that falls like on locker.
but it affects gameplay in a very significant way. It's harder for infantry to move, it's harder for vehicles to move, and it also replaces wheeled vehicles with boats. However, again, the problem is its open design. It's not so big as I've mentioned before on the Operation Firestorm, but it's present. Although snipers on the roofs are owners, if you want to capture point B for example. I mean, there is a roof of course, but it doesn't cover the wall point. There is also point E that's really wide open. On the other side of the map there is also point A, its parking garage, which is more covered on many sides. Point Echo has no such thing, which means a rather unequal fight between the two sides in the conflict. The Downbreaker is a map visually similar to Siege of Shanghai. There are places to hide for infantry, there are vehicles, so all classes can participate in game, and there is a Levolution event. It's not a really big event, but it apparently affects the gameplay because it's located in the middle of the map and it also creates new passage. This map is really close to being as good as Shanghai, but in my opinion it feels too small. Vehicles are still too powerful in certain places and it's not so easy to deal with them. I didn't talk about every single map, but I choose best examples to present my point of view. Now, don't get me wrong, these maps can be fun to play, and I also play them. But they are fun, especially if you don't pay attention to objective and just focus on getting frags with your vehicle. But from a balanced standpoint, it's a bit sad what has been done here. Sure, Battlefield isn't eSport game. It is meant to be casual game and casual experience, but even casual audience can experience some lack of balance when it comes to champions, classes or weapons. But here we have problem with map design, which is not just one or two elements, but it's associated with the wall map. It's not so easy to fix, because sometimes you need to construct the wall map from scratch or change it so much that's not same world anymore. Now let's move to Shanghai. As you can see by looking from above, this map is looking incredibly simple. We have this giant building in the middle, which sort of splits map for two sides, like symmetry. Every point on this map can be reached on foot or on a vehicle, and it's not that hard as you can think. Water zone in the middle is perfect to just swim to the other side of the map. You don't need to fight on the streets, which are dominated by armored vehicles for most of the time. In addition, every point can be also reached by every available form of transport. There is no point that is exclusively designed only for infantry. Of course, you cannot take a tank to Charlie unless you destroyed the building. Alright guys, you ready? Three. Alright. Two. One. What? Where is this? It seems that even this is not an obstacle for players. But after the evolution, point C becomes available for tanks or LAV. It's hard to survive right there, but the same is at the other points. There is no other map where there is so much infantry running so close around the vehicles and as an operator of a tank, you need to constantly pay attention to your surrounding in order to not be blown up with C4 or mines. This environment also looks incredibly good according to some other maps, especially in the vicinity of Point Alpha. The wall map is transparent at the start of the game, so it looks like the snipers are in heaven because of high buildings, which are perfect places for them. However, after collapse of building, the map is covered in dust, which blocks visibility a bit. It's not something significant as snowstorm on Operation Whiteout, but it's useful when crossing certain angles. On the conquest maps you can see a lot of engineers while at the same time assault class is rarely played, which is understandable. Engineer has more impact on the game than medic on this game mode. On some maps like Zavad, medic is more preferred because of close combat at the middle of the map where you and your team needs a lot of healing. On every point on Shanghai there are many places where infantry benefits and even medic sees some play. Although it is still considered the weakest class because it cannot destroy vehicles so well as other classes. After the evolution, next to the point C appears attack boat, which is a nice refresher of gameplay. Simultaneously, owning this ship doesn't benefit one side completely. Sure, it helps, but it doesn't mean that a particular side in the conflict will dominate the other. Besides this boat, we have also jet skies. Many players just ignore them, but it's very good option to flank your opponents. 
When the game seems to be stalemate, you can take point A or E to create a little chaos. Personal watercraft and RCB are the only water vehicles on the map and I think that's a good thing. Map isn't focused on water battle and this area is just addition to already good map. There are also some smaller revolution places like this footbridge right here. It's not something overpowered, but surely it's nice addition. Not many maps have such elements. It was my closer look at Battlefield 4 maps. As I've said before, don't get me wrong, all these maps are playable, in particular when this game has casual audience and sees no esports scene. But I think only one map of them all deserves special distinction. Thanks for watching.